Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is our journey with God. The name of our devotional today is Make Me a Little Cake. First, let us pray. In 1 Kings 17 verses 13 to 14, the Bible says, And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Thank you, my father. That is a beautiful Bible verse, my father. And it speaks about trust. It speaks about trust in giving you the very best, giving you the first, giving you the most treasured thing we have, even if it's the last thing we have. It speaks about having faith that you will multiply it, that you will provide. We give you praise, honor, and glory because truly you are the God of our salvation. You are our provider. You are our defender. You are our provider, Lord. And you provide every good thing in the mighty name of your precious son, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Our verses for today are part of the story of Elijah and the widow of Saraphath, told in 1 Kings 17. The story is instructive in a number of ways, but perhaps its most important lesson is what it has to say about giving. When the Spirit of God is at work in the world, it pays to support that work. Elijah was in the midst of his struggle with King Ahab and Queen Jezebel of the northern kingdom of Israel. Because of their sins and the sins of the people, Elijah had prophesied that there would be a drought. During the drought, the Lord told Elijah to go to Saraphath because he had commanded a widow there to feed you. The widow told Elijah that she was about to prepare her last meal and then die. So he assured her with the words of our verse for today. From the perspective of the world, the widow had it backwards. Instead of supporting Elijah, she should have kept everything for herself and her son. That is from the perspective of the world. Do not give what you have because you're going to run out and, and have nothing for yourself. From the perspective of the world, it was outrageous for Elijah to even ask her for food for, from a poor widow. He even had the audacity to ask her to feed him first. From the Lord's perspective, however, giving to the work of the kingdom he is working in the world is the key to survival in desperate times. Indeed. It is the key to prosperity. Proverbs 11, 24 through 25 says, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessings will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. The story of the widow of Saraphath is a story about priorities. What should come first are not really our concerns, but the Lord's concerns. Take to heart what happened to the widow and then keep an eye out for the opportunities to bless the work of the Lord that comes your way. Thank you, my father, for this beautiful word that reminds us to give you first, to give what we have, even if it's the last meal, even if it's the last morsel, the last jar of flour and the last jug of oil. My God, you have a way of multiplying everything, my Father. You are the great multiplier, my Father. And Lord, 
I've never seen the righteous forsaken or your seed begging bread. Thank you so much. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you bestow upon us, my Father. Everything, whatever is good and whatever is bad, my Father, there are only lessons. There are no losses, my God. We give you praise, honor, and glory today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. So my friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, and dance in the rain. You can remember to sing a little bit if you want to, like if nobody's listening, and remember to keep on smiling. Oh, and please drive polite. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.